Okay, in this video we're going to learn how to use swatches and fills. We're going to learn that through creating a uh, diagram that explains the uh, difference between the two major volumes or elements in um, this drawing. So I'll get my selection tool. Now, you're not going to learn about layers just yet. We'll learn that in subsequent videos, but if I just get the layers and uh, I'll turn the layer off, which is new line work, and I'm going to turn on the diagram layer, which I used the skills you learned previously using the pen tool and strokes and con different constraints to quickly trace on a separate layer um, uh, a few geometries. So I'll just turn off the line work that we don't want to see, and you'll see here is our diagram that we want to mess around with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take that diagram, I'm going to use skills that we learned previously to scale it down. I want it to be 20%, so if the other drawing was 1 is to 100, this one's going to be 1 is to 500. I'll drag that up there, and I'll just go back and turn my layer back on. There we go. So, I'm going to use this diagram here to explain some concepts going on in this drawing. So. If I want to snazz this drawing up a bit and stop using um, line work instead using swatches and fills, I start using the swatch panel over here. Okay, so I will select our geometries, move over to the swatches panel, and you'll notice in our uh, toolbar on the left that the swatches, which is denoted by the full square, is empty. So that's why if we were to drag our geometry over the other geometry, you can see right through it. Except we do have the stroke activated. So I'm going to just add a fill, given that my um, the fill panel is active, and I'll fill them both with red. Okay, quite easy, we've seen that before already. We can turn off our stroke if we wish, but I'll leave it on for the moment. A little more interestingly in the swatches panel is uh, adding our own swatches and also finding predefined swatches. Um, now, in architecture, doing panel presentations, you often want to use uh, predefined sets of swatches. Um, so, you can use a bunch of these, but if you, for example, want to use a, a bunch of pastel colors for all your diagrams, um, six different pastel colors, we have brush libraries that we, sorry, swatch libraries we can um, um, access. So, the swatch libraries menu, bottom left hand tab of the swatches menu, the swatches palette, sorry. And you'll see they're color-coded into different sorts of um, uh, colors. All your Pantone colors, if you are quite a fanatic about your color, and you have done some previous um, um, graphic design, even Russian poster art, we'll see what that's like. Okay, so Russian poster art dominantly uses these colors, apparently. So you can use those colors in your, um, in your, in your drawing or panel. I'm a big fan of Tetrad, so you can use these complementary colors for different diagrams. Um, now if I just, you'll see that each time you open up a new color swatch they open in this menu. I can close that and you'll see we have libraries that are really quite accessible um, just by clicking on the side. So you can find the ones that you like, whether they're the cool, if you're drawing up um, a seaside um, drawing or if you want to use these, a bit more hot, a bit more exciting. I'll select that one, the, uh, the base plane, and do a, we'll go a light green, and then we'll get the complementary blue for the geometry above, and that's how easy it is to do diagrams. Two more things I'm going to show you, which are extremely useful tools, um, are just how to create your own swatch. So we'll go up to the um, color guide and the color chooser menu. And the second skill we're going to be learning is how to use the eyedropper tool, extremely important. So I'll just double click on the fill and you'll see that I can move this bar up and down to change the rainbow and then I can add any, any different composition of white, grey, black and the true colour to form my own colour of any possible colour using the RGB spectrum. And while I'm in this menu, actually I'm not sure I can, nope I can't. Okay. You can of course use CMYK, which is what we are using for our printing um, application. You'll learn more about what that actually means later. 
um, and increase the percentage of each of those. If on the internet you find um, a particular color match or in Photoshop you use the eyedropper tool which I'll show you now. It's over here, you can access it using the shortcut I. I'll select that and I click on a color. You'll see up here in a color guide it gives us exact percentages of CMYK and I'll double click on that swatch and it gives us the exact RGB. So it's between 0 and 255 for RGB, each of, the, um, each of the values. On the internet you can find your own specific colors that have RGB values. You can get them by dropping the image into Photoshop or Illustrator and just clicking on quite literally anything if it's image art and getting that color if you want to form your own color swatches. You can then um, go create new swatch by clicking on this top right hand drop down menu of the color menu and you can give it a name. You can compile them and eventually have your own library if you wish. But just as a piece of advice, as an architecture student, I always prefer to use the predefined graphic design um, color swatches.